my name is Margaret Adele, and welcome to another Indie Book Review. I had intended on doing so many of these over the month of Indie April, and then life happened, and here I am with, like, less than a week left in the month, just on my third. But that's all right, we're still here. So today I am reviewing No Water for the Desert by Brittany Buckner. This is, again, one of those that I asked for because apparently my bans on getting review books don't apply to myself. And I was really interested in this because it's a contemporary and I don't usually read those. I think you could call this maybe N.A., I think, um, or like kind of book club fiction is also another way to, to say it. But this is all about a young woman named Grace who goes to live with her aunt for the summer, mostly to get away from her gay boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, and her mom. And over the course of the story, she starts to uncover some things about her past. She starts to move on to healing from some things. She makes a friend of an amateur porn star, which I was really intrigued by because not a lot of books will have, like, sex worker or porn worker characters in them. It's it's a little bit um, of a taboo still in fiction. So I was really intrigued by that. And also I just needed more of a character study than a plot-driven book, which this definitely is. This is much more, uh, the arc and the, the closure at the end is much more about Grace's personal development than any big plot points, which I loved. Uh, it's all about her struggle to, well, kind of become an actress, but also realize that she needs to do the work to become an actress and that kind of thing. Um, she goes to a community college, and I really liked how there was a professor there that was insanely supportive of her, because, fun fact, I am a community college graduate. I got my AA before I went on to get my BA and MA, and I hate how community colleges are still looked down on in a lot of fiction, because they are a great option for people uh, that wouldn't do well in a four-year. So I really liked how there were certain areas where she had a supportive teacher and all of that. Um, and I love Miss Kelly in general. I also loved uh, the best friend, uh, Gay Sella, which I'm, I haven't double-checked if that's a real name or not. Um, I believe the character is meant to be Hispanic or at least like partially Hispanic, like a Spanish-speaking grandmother and such. Uh, but... My only real critique of the book is in um, Gay Sella's character in that I love that she was there and I love that the relationship was neither too horrible nor too perfect. And that's kind of a big thing for the entirety of the book. It's not like, oh, this this relationship is absolutely perfect and this relationship is absolutely horrible. Like There are certain good points and bad points with her relationship with each of the characters, her aunt, her mom, etc. Um, but... Gay Sella at times felt too much like a stereotype of what a amateur porn star would be, you know, low-key, just all-around slutty and uh, not caring and apathetic about everything and that kind of thing, where it's like she also has, like, five boyfriends at any given time, and it didn't paint her generally in a good light and it's and it's almost like oh well of course she's doing this thing that's what she is and that kind of bugged me um I'd like to see a little bit more nuance to a character like that but the fact that she was in there at all and she helps uh our protagonist overcome some very big emotional hurdles throughout the course of her life um I believe the back of the book says it Yes, uh, so at the age of 11, Grace uh, suffered from statutory rape, um, and that's a big part of, of something that she can't, she's working to move past, but it's a struggle. Uh, she also has abuse from her mother, and things that start going wrong with her aunt as they start kind of falling apart with their relationship. So it's definitely a, a thick book in its themes. It's definitely... Um, a lot of focus on race. Um, our protagonist is black, own voices, and her aunt is um, like you see a lot of internalized racism in her aunt, and how like the women her aunt idolizes are still 
skinny, light-skinned women, um, whereas our, our main character, Grace, uh, describes herself as coffee with only a dash of milk. <laughs> so um, I, I thought that was really interesting seeing, you know, racism from a different aspect. Uh, and again, love that it was own voices. I probably would have taken that kind of theme with a giant grain of salt if this had been written by a white author. So it's one of those instances where it really matters what the demographics of the author of the book is. Um, and again, there are some big content warnings for things like rape, abortion, I'm going to forget some things, AIDS, uh, racism. Uh, definitely, definitely a thick themed book, even if it's a thin book itself. Um, but like I said before, it's great, like, discussion book club fiction where it's like I want to read this and then talk with someone else about it and and discuss about you know Aunt Beverly's insistence on being thin and light-skinned or trying to be like the white women in the country club she goes to versus uh our main character, Grace, who has a curvier figure and has, um, she doesn't call them dreadlocks. They're just locks. And I don't know if that's a thing, but, <laughs> um, in, in that kind of aspect, it's also a little bit, um, historical fiction, which seems really weird to say because I was trying to figure out when it was sex. I'm like, okay, I don't really see anyone with like a cell phone here. And that could just be, oh, we're just ignoring cell phones for the sake of the plot. But then at some point, um, Grace mentions like, oh, well, it's, it's not the 80s, it's 2000. I was like, okay, we're in the year 2000. And it is so weird <laughs> to think that that counts as historical fiction now because like I was alive at that time. Granted, I was only like seven, but I was still alive <laughs> at that time. But um, this makes for great uh, historical fiction if you want to talk about it like that. It also makes for um, great NA fiction because... Um, it's not just that our main character is 19. She's also a lot focused on her future and that weird gray area of I should be an adult, but I don't feel like one and where am I going next feeling that is really prevalent or should be really prevalent in NA books. And I loved that aspect. And you're definitely like low key cheering, cheering her on as she goes through things. The ending is also definitely a book club book ending in that it's not sad. It's just not the absolute HEA, like it's hopeful, but there are certain aspects that are still kind of sad and certain things that she just has to move on from. Like you're not going to see every relationship wrapped up nicely and, and every problem solved, but the, the problems that needed to be solved and the emotional arcs that needed to happen will have happened. So it's a very realistic ending. So if you're like, I want a lighthearted contemporary that would make me feel good, this is probably not the book for you. However, I read it while in quarantine with the everything going on, and it did actually provide a decent distraction because there's absolutely nothing about any kind of plague or any kind of illness. Well, I mean, yes, there's AIDS, but like not like a contagious via airborne pathogens illness. And like it was a distraction in that. And also the reading st uh, writing style is very simple and reads very quickly and also the chapters are very short which I like I like short chapters because they give you the like feeling of reading really fast even if you're not necessarily reading any faster than normal because you're like I just finished two chapters in 10 minutes well yeah they're both like three pages long but <laughs> it still feels good to have that and it makes the whole thing feel like it's going by a lot more quickly than maybe it actually is but again, this is definitely a thick theme book that I would uh, be wary of if you have certain triggers. And I believe it is just things like abortion, AIDS, racism, and rape, I believe. And the sexual assaults, um, you don't really see it in, like, it's not a play-by-play -play or a blow-by-blow. -blow. Um, it's just referenced, so you don't have that whole aspect. Um, and really, none of them are. None of them are like a, a blow by blow of this happens and this happens in the plot. They're just talked about a lot. So be wary of that. So overall, I gave this book four stars. Uh, took one star off for uh, Gay Stella's portrayal, but I still loved that she was in here. I loved how realistically it portrayed relationships. Um, at one point, it talks about how some friendships are really just there to teach you a thing 
and then you move on. And they're really only meant for, uh, what, what did she say, uh, a season and a reason. And then they kind of fade away. And I like that aspect. I think that's something we should really teach people more, that sometimes every friendship you make is still important, even if it's not meant to be lifelong BFS for decades. But regardless, I would highly suggest this one. Um, I'm also really glad that I got another Own Voices uh, African-American-led story to add to my list because I am always looking to diversify my list. And for some reason, I'm really good with Black Own Voices. So I'm, I'm still working on the rest of it. But... Um, Regardless, uh, if you are an indie author and you would like a review like this one, please email me. I will have my email down in the description below. Please make sure to also read my review policy. I will have that down there. It saves us a lot of time and answers a lot of questions. And with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.